In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 11, where I'll ask the question, why are Joseph's dreams important? Genesis 37, verses 5 through 11 says, Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the fields, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered round it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us, or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the saying in mind. So we know that sibling rivalry is a thing. If you've got brothers or sisters, you know that sometimes there's a little bit of competition, there's a little bit of animosity that takes place, and hopefully over the course of your life, you can shake all of that. You can have a good, solid relationship with your siblings, with your brothers and your sisters. But Joseph, he did not have a good relationship with his brothers, not at all. He was the baby of the family, and he was loved, and his father doted on him ever so much. And because of that, because of that special treatment he received from his father, Joseph's brothers hated him. They hated his guts. Then, all of a sudden, Joseph starts having these dreams. He has these dreams, and he tells them to his brothers, he tells them to his father, and they hate him even more. His brothers hate him even more because in his dreams, it depicts all of them bowing down before him. So here are three thoughts from Genesis 37, verses 5 through 11, answering the question, why are Joseph's dreams important? Thought number one, they are prophetic. Now, you and I probably have dreams. I have dreams. You probably have dreams. We probably remember some of them. We probably forget some of them. There's probably some of them that are pretty normal feelings, some of them that are pretty out there where crazy things are happening. But I've never had a dream that I thought was somehow prophetic. Not in any way, shape, or form. If I have a dream that I think is interesting or something funny happens, then I'll tell it to other people. But I never had a dream that made me think that this was a prophecy taking place. But Joseph does have that feeling. Joseph has a sense that these dreams are special. And we don't know how they're special. We don't know why they're special, but they seem distinct because they identify something significant happening. These dreams are prophetic and they predict something that ultimately is going to take place. Joseph's brothers, his father, they will bow down before him, acknowledging his authority. Thought number two, they prompt action. This is the crazy thing about these dreams that Joseph has. He has these dreams. He tells them to his brothers. It makes his brothers hate him all the more. And this is why they ultimately sell him into slavery, where he gets taken down into Egypt and sold again. And eventually, through the blessing of the Lord, finds his way at the height of power in Egypt. The dream of the sheaves and the stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to Joseph are the impetus. They prompt the action that ultimately brings about their fulfillment. This is absolutely amazing. And it points to the picture of God as being ultimately sovereign over all things, over all decisions, because how many thousands of decisions were made in the process of moving Joseph from Canaan down into Egypt. Innumerable decisions. And yet, it takes place. Thought number three, they are fulfilled. These dreams are ultimately fulfilled. This is why they are so important. They are fulfilled. Joseph's brothers do bow down to him. Joseph's father does bow down to him. He ultimately has this great authority over these people, not because he's particularly great in any way, but because the Lord blesses him in every area of his life. So where he has success, whether 
he's in prison or whether he is ruling a superpower. It's absolutely amazing that these dreams that happened so many years before would ultimately be fulfilled in a nation far away for the good of his family, but also the nation of Egypt and those surrounding nations. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Genesis chapters 36 through 39. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.